So let's go over three, three tactics, and then I'm gonna give you two metrics. Three tactics, and then two metrics to watch for. Every month. The first one of this, the first one is this. And you know this, but I'm gonna remind you of this because every time you're chair side, you need to be thinking this. You need to be thinking this, and you need to be leveraging the psychology around this. The bundle is back, baby. The bundle is back, okay? What do I mean by this? The bundle, okay? Costco knows this, Amazon knows this, and now we know this. The bundle is back means, hey, quadrant dentistry, yeah, that's our term, but now you have to position your treatment appointments like, look, because of COVID, because of where we're at, we are, and you don't wanna say it in a negative way, we are making it possible for our patients to get done more of their treatment in less amount of time. We are making it possible for our patients to get done more of their treatment in less amount of time. That doesn't mean you say, hey, if you do all of this, we'll give you a deal on it. That doesn't mean, I understand that uh, some of you that are in my case acceptance course, we talk about 3D. I'm not talking about that here. I'm talking about the, the underlying psychology of how you want to present to your patients. There is a layer of psychology here now that's been imbued in everybody's mind. It, it's there. We cannot get rid of it, at least for the, you know, the future right now. So, and if Dr. Narang, Narang says, we're doing this, awesome. But I want everybody to voice this, not just do it, okay? We are making it possible for all of our patients to do more of the treatment in less amount of time. Oh, wow, what does that mean? And they get that. So that means, that means John, you have less appointments here with the office and you can get more done. So if they're doing a crown, maybe you package a whitening up there. If they're doing the cleaning and if it's not a major perio case, you can do, the cleaning, the restorative, all in one visit. And I want you and your team to think of that and think, hey, you know what? And the team is where this can take off because if the team thinks, the team's used to thinking hygiene appointment, then we'll get you back in for the doctor. I want them to eliminate that and I want you, because one of the metrics I'm gonna give you at the end, you'll see why this all ties in together. I want you to think of, bundling everything. So truly less appointments for your patients, because I can tell you this, if you have less appointments for your patients, and if you ever get into a situation where your office, everything's full and everything is crowded, that's not the place to be right now, okay? Because that's gonna be frowned upon from a social perspective. Crowding is frowned upon right now, we know that, right? I just got my, I, I feel so much better. I just got my haircut this week and I was like, oh my God, I'm so happy to see you, right? And, um, you know, they did all the chairs in the weight room, they're like, Rob, they used to have like 12, 15 chairs. They had three chairs in there and they have half of half the amount of stylists working, half the amount of stylists working, but they are still busy because now they can make appointments online. They can check wait times online, all of that stuff. So same thing here, every single treatment you do, bundle it. Even if it's a, never, don't call someone in for a buckle composite. Just don't do it. Because I'll tell you, it is, cre it, it, it will, that's the rug that will be pulled over under your feet. Because slowly you're gonna be like, oh my God, what happened? I had a bunch of buckle composites today. But your cost per patient went up. So think about what else could you bundle? Well, you can bu bundle, well, big cases are easy, right? Because you're thinking, look, we'll prep the uppers, we'll put them in the temporary, then they'll go back, then they'll come back in, and we'll you know, deliver, the next time we'll prep the lowers, right? I get that. But what about bread and butter dentistry, where it's restorative? Couple your quadrant dentistries, uh, your dentistry appointments, with your hygiene appointments. And when you look at that schedule, you're looking at hygiene, they can come right here, and then they can do quadrant dentistry or if they have a hygiene appointment and you know they have treatment, this is why I said, if you're doing it, that's great, but you need to be talking about it in the front office. Then your front office has to say, hey, look, right now, because of what's happening, what we're encouraging patients to do 
is to do more of the treatment in less amount of time. With, does that sound good to you, Stacy? Because now you don't have to come and see us as many times, yet you can get more of your treatment done. You have to present it that way. I can get more done and we, they don't have to come see you. Now, you may have to work out the finances where if they have, you know, maybe three appointments or if it's four appointments, you can cut it up and, sked, and, and charge out their card in five sessions, right? If you have to cut it up and you're like, wow, they don't have the money to do it all in two sessions, that's fine. Charge it out in three sessions. Charge it out in three sessions, right? For certain patients, you know who they are in your practice. Just amortize those payments out in three sessions, right? When I say amortize, you don't need to charge them interest, but charge it out in three sessions or one more session. Offer what we also talk about in case acceptance. We talk about 3D, which is offer them a discount on the date you diagnose something. On the date you diagnose something, DDD, discount on the date you diagnose, you wanna say, hey, if you end up paying for this amount today, and booking your next three sessions with us because we're gonna to try to get more of your treatment done in less amount of time because it limits your time in the office, which is great. You can do other things. Do not say it's gonna limit your time because we're COVID, we're a COVID hotspot because you're not, you're not, right? You wanna say this and you don't have to justify it because social psychology warrants right now that people are doing less frequency outside, right? So if you end up doing 3D where you say, hey, if you end up paying for the next, for this amount today, and you book your next three or four appointments, then we can give you this, or we can do 7% off, whatever it is. That's your 3D perspective, right? If you have case acceptance, you can watch that in, three, uh, in our case acceptance course where I go over that with you. Now, that's one layer. The other layer is when you bundle on the phone. This is what your team, this has to be in the narrative. This has to be in there. Now, I, I laid it out and said, hey, look, you have to have your team tell your patients that, hey, we're doing more dentistry in less amount of time, which means that you have to come here less, which is awesome. And when, with your hygiene appointments, we're encouraging you to get done any treatment that you need. Now, if you can couple a couple of fillings with hygiene, great, right? But I don't want you to call people in for standalone treatment and you have to figure out what that number is for you. Anything below X amount of dollars, we're not gonna call, call in. We're gonna try to do our best to not call them in for standalone, right? Do not practice the old way. Grab on to what's happening right now and do it that way. Bundle, so the bundle is back, that's number one. The other thing is this, which we talked about, is the second thing is this. It's going to be, scheduling is gonna be much more strategic. Strategic scheduling, that's number two. So if your team is there, and if some of your team is watching this, then you gotta ask them, how strategic are you with what you're scheduling for? How strategic are you with, well, what does that mean? What does that mean, uh, you know, Dr. Wingard? What do you mean by strategic? They're gonna ask you. Well, if they're coming in for hygiene, is there anything else that they need? Is there anything else that they need? Yeah, they need a crown and they needed those two fillings. Okay, well, let's have that conversation before, perhaps on the phone, perhaps a virtual consult with your team members, right? You can always, your team members can all schedule with them virtually too. And they are more opt to doing treatment and bundling treatment and strategically scheduling when they've had that conversation. Because what's gonna happen is, so often that you say one line in the office and they're like, sure. And then you think, God, I wish I would have kind of represented that before they came in so I could have planned my schedule accordingly. So that's what you want to do this time, which is if that means you have to do a simple virtual consult with them or, you know, uh, Lindsay up front has to do a simple virtual consult with them or Allison has to do one up front, that's fine. But lay it out, like, okay, we're going to get your cleaning done, then we're going to get this right side done that same day. It's going to enable us to do more of your treatment, less amount of time, right? Strategic scheduling is the backbone of every conversation that your team is going to have with a patient. And even when you have your office meetings, I want you to think about, they're coming in for hygiene. Can we just put them here with the doctor next? And is it worth doing that? So if they have a buccal composite and you try to couple that together, 
That may not be worth doing, but that may be like an overflow where it's like, okay, they have that, they need to get it done. I don't want to call them back. For, maybe that's overflow, right? But you have to look at those patients and prioritize those cases where you can bundle into the strategy of the scheduling. Does that make sense? The third thing is this. This is a big one. This is a big one. And I know some of you are doing this and some of you, this is new. Because appointments, live appointments, like share side appointments have gotten so much more valuable. And that, yep, I said more valuable. And why did I say that? Because the cost to see a patient has gone up. So the share side appointments got more valuable. That means now more than ever, you have to be doing, and for the third thing, you have to be doing these things. These are three things within number three. You have to, to you have to capture, spread, and scale. Capture, spread, and scale. Here's what I mean. If you just placed an inlay, an onlay, or a crown, and the patient loved it, which I know 99% of you, like 90, they all love it. Am I? Ask yourself this question. Is me or my team capturing and spreading this stuff so we can scale the business? And if the answer is a no, then you are undervaluing that live session with yourself. You're the performer, you're the celebrity, you're the icon, you're the legend in your practice, it's you. You know, some of you have been doing this for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, and you're looking at yourself like, you're just the dentist. No, you've been honing your craft for two decades. Your front office has been working with you for a decade, five years, seven years, 10 years. You guys are the experts. There's a small percentage of the world that can do what you do. So if they have time with you, if your patient has time with you, are you capturing those results? And if you're not, man, you're undervaluing your time. What do you mean by capturing results, Ranesh? What do you mean? I, I don't get it. Capturing means, and you guys know what I'm gonna say, either this or pictures. Some of you saw Dr. Berlin's uh, dental photography webinar, right? Whether you're in his program or you're not, it, you can still take a picture. Whether you're using a DSLR camera or you're using your, your phone, uh, you can still take a picture. Literally, that's before and after. What do I mean by capture? Because it's kind of like if you go out to dinner with your, your husband, your partner, your wife, or you spend time with your kids, you want to capture that moment because it's a special moment. So you can relive it and be fulfilled and you can think back and look at the memories. Same thing with your practice. If you're not capturing the inlay cementation or the veneers that you cement in and you're letting that patient walk out the door without you taking a picture, even the least you can do is a picture with them and a narrative about what you did. Now, you all should be, if, you, if you've been around me long enough, you all should be, um, you know, you've drank the Kool-Aid hopefully and you should be doing that video with them. You should be doing that video with them. Hey, hey John, how did it go? Like, I know we placed the veneers in. What do you think? Boom, that's it. You can do it like this. You can have your front, uh, your, your team. You can have, uh, you know, someone come through and, and hold it like this horizontal and get you with the patient talking about it. That's a capture. Now, what do I mean by spread? Well, you have to spread that, spread the news. So your team has to know if we, if we captured, your team has to know, if we captured something, don't even capture this if you're not gonna spread the news. Don't even do it. Don't, don't, don't even do it. Why are you putting it on your phone if you're not committing to spreading the news? Because but if it lives in here, it's kind of like old furniture. No one will use it, okay? If it lives in here, no one's gonna use it. You have to spread this and put it on to, first of all, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. And then what you have to do is what I showed you last week, which was put it on a single call to action page. 
single call to action page and email your patients. Because the more your patients see stories of transformation and experiences from your office, from your brand, the higher the value of your practice becomes, the more it's easier, it, it, it's more easier for you to charge more, better fees, higher fees, all that stuff. Let me give you an example. This is what I just said. The more your patients see experiences from your brand, everything becomes easier. What do I mean by that? Let me prove it to you. What did Nike do? Back in the Michael Jordan days, what did Nike do? What is Nike still doing? Nike's one of the biggest sports, comp, you know, retailers in the world. What are they doing? They're still capturing the experience. Back then it was Michael Jordan, you know, even uh, you know, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James. Every athlete in every sport, what do they do? They captured their experiences and they spread those experiences. They use commercials. We have it better. We get to use social and we get to use our email list our database. So they spread those experiences. And then what else do they do? They scale the business like that. What, how do you scale the business? You're like, Ranesh, if I'm capturing it, okay, I get, I, I can spread those experiences. How do I scale the business because of what I captured? Well, it's a great question. And it's a very simple answer to doing this. Let me show you uh, on my screen. And this is gonna, and I wanna make a point with this because this is a very valuable thing for us to just really have in, okay? So how do I scale those experiences? That's the question. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that, right? Uh, there's only one way and this is the way to do it. And your revenue and your production is directly linked to this. This is how you scale those experiences. And this is something that you'll see why I'm saying this and why this is so important. This is how you, you spread this by putting on social and you scale it by offering the video, like you, you, you send the video out to your patient database and you have a call to action below the video. The way you scale any company is to have a call to action. In this case, it was this video on veneers, right? So literally on a single page like we went over last time. And uh, then you have, below that you have the schedule a free virtual console or schedule in the office where they would click here, it would go to your scheduling page, you would schedule in the office. The more call to actions you have in your business, the more revenue you will make. Now this goes hands down everywhere. What do I mean by this? The more, if you wanna do more veneers, and I learned this 20 years ago, when I came out and I was, you know, an associate, and she said, and I wanna do more veneer cases. I wanna do more veneer cases. And the office manager was excellent at this practice. They were doing, uh, you know, $2 million a year, and I was the rookie dentist and I want to do more veneers. And she said one thing to me that always stuck with me, which is so basic, but it's so true. And she said, Dr. Ganatra, if you want to do more veneers, diagnose more veneers. I was like, oh it, yeah. I mean, I know you've got to diagnose them to do them. I don't mean be unethical or make treatment up. I don't mean that. And I know this group, that's not even a thought. I want you to, diagnose the things that you want to do, which means that when you diagnose something, that's a call to action. That's a call to action in every business. You cannot scale a business. The office that's doing 3 million versus the, you know, we have a, a doctor that they do eight figures in their office. Okay. He's in Texas. Uh, you, you guys may know Dr. Berlin, right? He has a photography course. They do eight figures in his practice. The difference between an eight figure practice, a seven figure practice and a five figure practice or six figure practice is there are more calls to action. There's more diagnostics. You're diagnosing more, you're treating more. You're diagnosing more, you're treating more. So in any business, what is that called? Call to action. 
So if you don't have the revenue you, you, that you want, yet you have the patience they need it, how many call to actions do you have going out? Are you actually capturing the stuff and are you spreading it you know, in the community and on Facebook and everywhere else and then shooting out a single page call to action like I showed you here, a single page call to action where they can book in with your, uh, with your um, team? Are you doing that? More call to actions, more scale. More call to actions, more scale. More diagnostics, more scale. This is how you go from a $30,000 a month to $100,000 a month to $150,000 to $200,000. This is how, you, it's, it's, that's what you do. That is the nuts and bolts of the direct outcome. You know, I talked to Dennis just this week, new practice, and they got the office for a really low price. It had a thousand patients, and they paid less than 10 grand for the office. Less than 10 grand, it, it, you know, and they were concerned. They're like, oh my God, what am I? I'm like, look, you got a thousand patients. You need to get them in. And you need to start thinking about what I call outcome based thinking. What is outcome based thinking? Right now, more than ever, it's so easy to get distracted with doing all these ancillary things. We got this going on, we got that going on, we got this, we can do this. There's all these other things where you think you're just working and moving. Because you're moving, you think you're gonna find meaning in that movement. It's not like that. Just because you're moving, doesn't mean you're moving in the right direction. The way to point the needle in the right direction is to ask yourself, what are the outcomes that I'm after? Do I wanna work four days a week? Five days, maybe it's three days. Do I, do I wanna do 50,000 a month, 100,000 a month? What do you wanna do in your office? 150, 200? I don't know what it is for you, but if you have not clarified that outcome, and then clarifying is one thing, and then designing every part of your day in the practice to really focus on outcomes and outcome-based thinking, which means that, hey, it's not about doing all these other things. It's about getting the patient in, Simple, foundational elements. We try to make things sexy. And sexy does not always soar, right? Sexy does not always soar. So get the patient in, treatment plan them, get started on treatment. Pay, get collect today. How do you collect today? We just went over bundling, strategic scheduling. Those are the three tactical principles that you got. And now it's gonna be easier because patients know that, hey, guess what? I need to come in and I need less appointments to get the same thing done. That is the overall consensus in the marketplace right now. So then what about the two metrics that you should be watching? If you are doing these three things, then there's specifically two metrics that you need to watch over, okay? And, and those are gonna make a big difference as to, you know, how you're kind of moving about.